Brother Wajid sent us a question saying, how do normal Muslims know which ayat are mutashabihat? How many ayat are abrogated but exist in the Quran? And are there any ayat abrogated and also do not exist in the Quran? Wajid, this requires a lecture. And this is a Q&A uh, series, not um, a place for such structured knowledge. We know that we have a science called Ulum al-Quran, the sciences of the Quran, which deals about or deals with the Quran, where it was revealed, when it was revealed, Asbab al-Nuzul, it deals with whether this ayah is Makki or Madani and the definition of Makki or Madani. Is it related to place or where it was revealed or related to time before Hijra or after Hijra, regardless of the town, but yet still we call it Makki and Madani. It deals with an nasikh wal mansukh the abrogated verses of the Quran, which he also asked about. Uh, it deals with a lot of things that are mentioned in the Quran. And a lot of it also is connected to usul al-fiqh, fundamentals of fiqh, in terms of al-am wal-khas, al-mutlaq wal-muqayyad, al-mujmal wal-mufassal, all of these things that were studied in usul al-fiqh are also applicable to ulum al-Qur'an in totality and generality. Now, we know that the verses of Qur'an are formed of muhkamat and mutashabihat. And you're asking me, how do people know about these things? Definitely, laymen cannot know out of thin air about such things. They must go back to the books of tafsir, to the scholars of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, who learnt this from the three favorite generations of the companions, the tabi'een, and the tabi'i tabi'een. So we know this by going back to their books and learning what is considered to be mutashabih, because some might consider the attributes of Allah Azza wa to be mutashabihat, wal-iyadu billah. And this is not true. We know that this is muhkamah, and it is solid, strong, and understood to all. How it is, this is something we don't know the nature, but we understand and we believe what it means. It's not something that is ambiguous in the sense that we don't understand it. We know what it means, we know what implies to, and we believe in it without simulating it, without saying that Allah Azza wa is like this, or interpreting it, Allah Azza wa is like that, etc. We believe in it as it is, while believing that Allah is unlike anything we know of. When it comes to abrogation, Allah Azza wa Jal reveals the verses of the Quran for a specific reason. And some of these revelations may be abrogated. And abrogated means abrogation is to uplift the ruling. So a ruling comes, a revelation comes that this is prohibited. Then it is abrogated and becomes permissible. Or it, co for, it comes for something to say that this is permissible and then it abrogates it and makes it haram. And the abrogation is divided into three types. Abrogation of the ruling while the recitation remains. And this is the vast majority of rulings. So we know that the prohibition of consuming intoxicants were given 
through three stages. The first one, Allah says that they ask you about wine and gambling, intoxicants, and gambling. Say that there is benefit in it, and there is a lot of harm as well. And the harm is far greater than the benefit. So from being permissible, the first rule is that mm, it's best not to do it. The second stage is when Allah says, oh, who you believe, do not approach, do not offer prayer when you are intoxicated until you are aware of what you say. So this prohibited the Muslims from being intoxicated at the times of prayers. And this means that you can maybe get wasted after Fajr because there is about, there is about six hours till Dhuhr, the following prayer, or after Isha, especially in uh, a winter when the night is long. Then the third prohibition came, or the third level of abrogation came, when Allah says that verily wine, that is intoxicants, um, uh, al gambling, uh, the idols where the things are slaughtered to as a sacrifice, and drawing the lots. All of these are abomination from shaitan, so you have to refrain from it. And this is total prohibition. Now these verses are mentioned in the Quran, we recite them. No one can come and say, listen, Allah says, do not pray or approach prayer when you are in the state of intoxicants, intoxication until you understand what you say. So now, after Isha, I can get wasted because I don't have to pray. Allah says this in the Quran. Says, no, Akhi, this was abrogated. But the ayah and recitation remains as it is. This is phase one. Phase two is when the verse was revealed, it was abrogated from being recited. So it's not there in the Quran anymore. But the ruling remains as it is. And scholars give an example for this by the authentic hadith in Sahih Bukhari and elsewhere, where Allah Azza wa Jal says, the Prophet said, I assume that Allah says, if the son of Adam had a valley of gold, he would acquire a second to it. And if he had two valleys of gold, he would acquire a third one to it. And nothing fills the eye of the son of Adam. Nothing, nothing fills the mouth of son of Adam. Nothing fills the stomach of son of Adam except dust. So scholars say that this was a verse in the Quran, but reciting it was abrogated and the ruling remains as it is. So this is number two. The third one is what was considered to be part of the Quran, a verse of the Quran. Then the ruling was abrogated and reciting it was abrogated as well. So it's not found in the Quran anymore. And they give an example of the hadith of Mother Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. She said, it used to be part of the Quran that 10 sucklings prohibit a child and he becomes the son of the woman who suckled him. And this was abrogated into five. So now we look at the 10. You, in, in the beginning, if you suckle a child 10 meals, 10 times, he becomes your son. This was abrogated into suckling the child five times. So the 10 now, the ruling is abrogated. Okay, let's look in the Quran. 
Do we find the ayah that mentions this? The answer is no, because that was abrogated as well from being recited. So here we have the two types of abrogation, the uplifting of the ruling and also the uh, uh, uplifting of the verse itself that it is, does not exist. How do we know this? We can't know this. Akhi. We cannot open the Quran and say, hmm, there's something abrogated here or there. You have to go back to the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ and to the sunnah, the books of sunnah that indicate to you that such an uh, abrogation took place. And you have to look into the books of tafsir. You have to read the books of al-nasikh wal mansukh You have to read the books on the sciences of the Quran. And if you do this, then you do not become a normal Muslim. You become a student of knowledge and Allah Azza wa knows best.